All right, we're going to find missing values involved with mean. So let's say I have a set containing the numbers 7, 3, 4, 2, and 9. And I want to include one more piece of data, one more number, so that I'll get a mean equal to 30. I need to figure out what value is missing. Okay, so I need to do 7 plus 3 plus 4 plus 2 plus 9 plus some unknown value. I'm going to call it x. All of that will be divided by, well, now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces of data. And I said I want that mean to be equal to 30. Okay, well, what I need to do is chunk the information. So there's kind of a set of implied parentheses here. I need to find out what that total is. Go ahead and grab your calculator. Find out what 7 plus 3 plus 4 plus 2 plus 9 is equal to. And I found we get 25 plus some unknown number x being divided by 6 is equal to 30. Now, I'm not real fond of the idea of PEMDAS, but I know it helps some kids to remember how to do order of operations. Well, when I'm trying to find an x, I actually want to go backward through the order of operations. Now, what I need to remember is that because this is in fractional form, there's an implied set of parentheses there. So the first question is, do I have an add or subtract standing alone that I need to get rid of? No. This addition is inside a set of parentheses. That means it's the last thing we'll do. So going backward through my order of operations, do I have a multiplication or division happening? Yeah, I have a division here by 6. I need to undo that. To undo division, remember that we multiply. So I need to multiply both sides by 6. When I do that, the 6's cancel out, and I'm left with that 25 plus x set in those implied parentheses. And that's equal to, well, let's see, what is 30 times 6? Can you do that in your head? It's 180. So now again, I'm thinking backward through my order of operations. And the next thing I would do is say, do I have any exponents to take care of? No. So finally, do I have any parentheses to take care of? Yes, I do. Inside the set of parentheses, I have 25 plus x. I want to get the x alone. Do you remember how to get rid of a positive number? That's right. I need to take that positive number and subtract it. So x will equal whatever 180 minus 25 is. That's 100. 55. Now let's take this idea and use it in a practical sense. If I have four test scores of 73, 81, 92, and 77, and I know I'm going to take one more test, I want to know what score would I need to have a mean of 81.4. Maybe that's my particular teacher's cutoff for a B minus. It's an odd number, but that's okay. So again, I need to set up the problem. I'm going to take 73 plus 81 plus 92 plus 77 plus some unknown value. Again, I'm going to call it x. And divide by however many pieces of data I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this time I want to get this kind of unusual mean, but still the mean of 81.4. So there's my setup. Now remember, there's an implied set of parentheses here. So we want to add all of those numbers together. So go ahead, use your calculator. You don't need to hurt yourself. We're not trying to take up everybody's time. When I add that together, I get 323 plus x divided by 5 should give me a mean of 81.4. Now remember, because this is written as a fraction, there's an implied set of parentheses here in the top. 
So again, I want to think about my order of operations, and I want to work backward. So do I have an addition or subtraction just hanging out free in space to take care of? No, this addition is inside this set of implied parentheses. So that'll be last, because parentheses are last when I undo order of operations. Do I have a multiplication or a division to get rid of? Yeah, that I do. This fraction bar means to divide by 5, so to undo division, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5, so that those 5's will cancel. My 323 plus x inside of its implied parentheses will be equal to, well, let's use our calculator, 81.4 times 5. I get a total of 407. And now the last thing I want to do is get that x alone. How do I get rid of a positive 323? I subtract 323. And I will find the test score that I need to have. And it turns out I'll have to get an 84 on my test to get an 81.4 average. Well, that means any score that's bigger than 84 would guarantee me at least that B minus, if not a better grade.